Hello. Hello. Welcome back to the show. So it, we are starting a cult that's grand. I'm Jake. Yes, 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 yes. It, it is true. We are back with another episode. It will be the final episode of September. How about that? Yeah, right before spooktastic time. Ain't that right? the truth? It's that time of the year. It's coming up real quick. Navi's freaking out about it right now. I watched Monster House last night. Uh, it was a good warm up, I guess. You know, it was it was interesting. It was weird. I did the the yearly watch of The Shining. It was great. Nice, just nice. as great as I remember it. Those are those are two very different movies, but they somehow feel the same. Yeah, in a uh, way, the Overlook Hotel is a haunted house, right? Yeah, yeah. It it's shines. Just a, it's just a big house. It shines. It's a large house. But we are back with a brand new episode, and we figured. To start off the Halloween season, right? I mean, I know we might be a little bit early for some of you out there, but uh, for us, it never ends. So this is our time. You know, this is when it's allowed. Yeah. This is when it's accepted. No, it's true. If you've listened to the show before, you know this. Mm, mm-hmm. But if it's your first time, welcome. Navi the dog is here. He might be making some noise. Yes, he's actually in between both of us right now. He's looking at yeah. me funny. The moment I stop petting him, he starts crying. He absolutely does that uh, without question most of the time. He just starts, you know, barking, crying. Yep. Whining, he's a he's a real ham of a dog. He's circling. He's circling right now. He's yawning. He's doing everything. Yeah, yeah, he does like to just kind of hang out, you know. But today, Navi is not what we're talking about. Today, we're going to be doing part two of our... How long ago was it since we did curses? That was quite a while ago. That was ago. a long-ass time ago. But we're doing curses again. Um, yeah, warm you up for the season, the, you know. The season. Get yeah. you interested. Like, we're not diving into full-on, you know, scariness. Uh, I mean, depending, I guess, on who you ask. But, you know, it, it, it'll get you a nice little warm-up. It's the opening yeah. act for what's to come. No, it's true. Get and just you a like little with in the, the mood. The debut of the spooky season, so is the debut of allergy season, as you could probably hear in my voice. That yeah, yeah, and yeah. Navi is not fucking helping, so it is moving in with a force this year, guys. Force. Um, for those of you around the area, we had a drastic like weather change. I'm pretty sure it was like you know, kind of all over the the Midwest. I assume all over the map. But uh, yeah, it really drastically changed, and that. Probably fucked up a lot of people's, you know... Murdered my sinuses. Internal body clock and... That feels like a balloon. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough go of it now. But it's everybody, hilarious. Everybody will be fine. It yes. should be okay unless you die. And you know what? In which case, that you won't suck. even realize. You you probably... I don't know what happens after you die. Yeah, dying's... Honestly, dying's probably one of the easiest things you'll ever do because it just happens. You don't even have to try. But, and then, but, you know, after it's over, it's like, well, that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, we're doing curses today. What, what do you want to start? You want to start with the one that we had in common? I think so, today? yeah. Why don't we, we just chop right into that one, you yeah. know? All right, so we're going to do some cursed things. The first cursed item is a doll by the name of Robert. Roberto the doll. Roberto the doll. He's an alleged haunted doll. Roboito. Roboito. From fucking Waterboy. Oh, the God. dad. Uh, Roboito. Oh, now he's got a toy. But uh, so he is exhibited at the East Martello Museum. Yes. Yeah, he was once owned by Key West, Florida painter and author Robert Eugene Otto. Robert Eugene, Robert Jean, Rajin. I, I don't know. Either just, one, whichever one of those you want to go with. Given by. name combinations. But just be ready. Uh, we might. Probably refer to him as uh, Gene, you know? That's Gene. Just, that's just the way that a lot of... He's always, I guess, was referred to as Gene. Gene the man. So when you're like, well, I don't get it. What the fuck? Yeah, that, that's his middle name, you know? No, it's true. Well, uh, he was... Uh, you know, so uh, Robert the Doll himself. He was reportedly manufactured by this Steiff company, which is a German company. Apparently uh, is widely known for the uh, development of the teddy bear. Isn't that fun? I like that. The teddy bear for Teddy Roosevelt. I never knew that that was like why it was called the teddy bears for Teddy Roosevelt. Really? See, I had always heard that and I never knew if it was actually true. But then this did confirm that, yeah, what I had The fact that it's like made by a German company is like weird. I guess they just really loved TR. Like they just really cared about him. He was a rough and tumble. Anyway, so he uh, he remains in uh, the, the... all right, wait a minute. 
I'm all scattered here. I have no... I didn't write any sort of script today. This is the first time I'm just doing articles alone. Oh, okay. So I like be that. all scattered, all right? According to the legend, the doll has supernatural abilities that allow it to move, change its facial expressions, and make giggling sounds. Okay? Eee! Isn't that creepy? So some versions of the legend claim that the young girl, a young girl of uh, Bahamian, not Bohemian, it's Bahamian uh, descent, gave Otto uh, the doll as a gift or as retaliation for a wrongdoing. So I don't know what this uh, this auto guy did, and he just received a, a doll in in response. How do you deal with your problems, Grant? Do you give dolls usually? Um, I can honestly say that I've never actually given anybody a doll. Um, never, not even like a child. No, I the the closest that I've gotten to that was when Georgie had his child. Uh, we gave her like a stuffed flower, but it wasn't a doll. Did the flower have like a, a face on it? No, it was literally just a flower. Oh, God damn it! Well, uh, th- this uh, supposed uh, girl gave Otto a doll for retaliation of a wrongdoing. Other stories claim that the doll moved uh, the, that the doll moved voodoo figurines around the room. Ooh, Isn't that creepy? Spooky. And was uh, aware of what went on around him. The doll was aware. So apparently, uh, Robert Eugene, as a child, he was given this as a child, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and he uh, he would apparently be heard by his parents talking to uh, to uh, to Robert in his room, just having full on conversations with him. He would also refer to Robert as if he was a person. Now he shut the fuck up. He heard something. He ran away. But anyway, yeah, he would uh, he would be like, "Oh, Robert's a guy. I think so. Robert is a guy. I'm going to talk about him." But then there was this one night. Okay, in uh, in Robert's room that apparently, or Gene, Robert Eugene, who cares, Otto, it's the same kid. I like Gene. Yeah, I it, like it Gene. Let's call him Gene, Gene. From Bob's Burgers, you know? Yeah, and he's kind of an eccentric kid, right? Ah, uh, Gene. There we go. Well, uh, apparently, uh, there was some, uh, some craziness that went on in his room one night. Apparently, Eugene woke up to Robert just uh, sitting at the edge of his bed, staring at him. All right, the, Fuck that. It, isn't that fucking creepy? And then uh, he started calling for help from his mom. You know, he was like, "Mom, help me!" Uh, as Robert, if, you know, is as sitting. A, Robert's as a, sitting. That's a natural reaction, I would say, as anybody would have. Um, if you were to see an inanimate object looking at you and in, in, in a different position than you left it, and it's it seems as if it's focusing on you, you'd probably react. Uh, even if you know you're older, old enough to not like be around your parents. Um, you'd probably still yell for somebody that's around. I'd probably call for my mom if this happened right now. I don't even live with my mother, and I would scream for my mother. No, it's true, yeah. I would just hope that somehow she hears me. Yeah. Well, this mom did. Uh, Jean's mom heard her, and uh, she was like, oh, my fuck. And she got out of bed, and she ran over to the door, and she finally pried it open, only to find a lot of the furniture in the bedroom turned over. That's not right, good. It was all fucked up, the room was. And uh, Gene, apparently, he was just like, you know what? Robert did it. He didn't say you know what, but he said Robert did it. And he was very, uh, he was coiled up in the corner, very afraid. And, and realistically, she probably was like, go back to bed, Gene. She's like, what the fuck have you been doing? Dude, I used to do that as a kid, like just move around furniture in the middle of the night. when I was supposed to be asleep. I was like, I want to do some redecorating. Yeah, you're, you were a weirdo. I'll tell you that. If that is true, Why? you are a strange, strange bird. Because that's not... You never wanted to, like, rearrange just in the middle of the night? You're just like, I'm not tired. Typically, I'm, no. I feel like I should be productive. But I will say, I'll give credit to you on this, because you probably did that, and then you probably, I assume, did not scream in horror to your mother. No, no, no. That was no. more of a personal choice Especially that you not, made. Especially not pointing at Mr. Bunny. I had a, uh, I have a stuffed animal called Mr. Bunny. I've had him since I was, like, two. Nice, okay. Mr. Bunny is my best friend. Oh, okay, okay. But. Weirdo. You Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck fucking you. weird. We all can't have a live dog named Navi, even though weirdo. I have a live dog in my house. He, I, I didn't have him forever. He's like one, so you know he's just, he's just a new friend. Yeah, we're yeah. still in that like acquaintance phase. You know, it's like no, it is true. I'm still trying to work out the kinks, see what he's all about. He still isn't com- completely understanding the uh, the faux pas during the podcast when he screams. Nah, he you know, at, at reflections on the wall and stuff. 
Yeah, he's learning. He's still young. You know, he's learning. Yeah. But I well, don't freak out when I because I often do wake up and he's looking at me, and he's just there. But it doesn't freak me out. Cause I'm like, okay, I know that. Well, yeah, you like know he is and is supposed to be uh, alive. Yeah. You but, know what I mean? As opposed to Robert the doll. But apparently, uh, Gene's mom after this was like, you know what, Gene, you should probably just lock this guy up in the attic. You know, it's a reasonable can't response. cause any more you know problems for you. And so that's what Gene did. But apparently, after they did this, they could hear just like footsteps kind of pacing, pacing in the attic. That's not normal. Going back and forth, and a devilish giggle could often be heard. <laughs> and apparently, like uh, some, uh, you know, uh, neighborhood kids, they would claim to see Robert peering at them through the attic window as they played. See, and that's creepy. Because the... It typically, like, it's hard to describe. Um, I mean, you'll see a picture. We'll put it up on the Instagram, you know. But it's hard to wrap your mind around the visual of Robert. Yeah, he he almost looks like a, a doll that isn't finished. Like, he has, like, pieces that are supposed to go on his face, but they're not quite there yet. Like, mm-hmm. he was taken off the line early or something. Yeah, and it, he's got, like, a... I think the best way to describe it would be... I don't know if this is something that a lot of people will understand, but, like, think of, like, a Nerf ball. Like, did you ever have, like, a Nerf football, possibly a basketball, any Nerf ball? Yeah. I don't know why. As a kid, I always just, like, cut into those with, like, knives and shit. Okay, perfect. Because I was very, very interested in the foam, the foaminess. This is the perfect example, because if you were to peel the painting or the imaging off of the Nerf ball... Uh, that's kind of what Robert's face looks like. Yeah, with like pencils stuck in it. Yeah, and it's but just the pencils like, aren't there anymore. It's just the holes. Yeah, they just made like a little. Sl- it looks like an uncompleted doll. Yeah, you'll all see. You'll see on the on the Instagram. And it's it is funny because even just looking at pictures and obviously you know like there's there's videos online of people talking about him and you know there's images accompanied with that. It it looks spooky enough as it is because it looks so unnatural it's not something that you typically would see somebody having no very much so not no but that that definitely adds to it and then the the fact that there's neighborhood kids seeing that peer out the window that's terrifying because it doesn't look it it doesn't even it doesn't look human and it doesn't look animal it looks like a fucking toy so when you see that you're like well somebody propped that up and then it like you know maybe it moves its head a little bit you're like oh what the hell is that yeah no explanations. No, it's it's a creepy guy. Yeah, Robert's a creepy doll. Apparently, he's in some sort of museum, and uh, staff members of the museum now report that Robert's facial expressions change, and they hear demonic giggling, and have seen Robert put his hand up on the glass. Ooh! And apparently, like it was probably a really good PR move for the uh, the museum that he's in right now to paste all the. Uh, Letters from onlookers at the museum that have apparently antagonized Robert in the past and just experienced the worst luck in the world. Yes. Afterward. And they were just like, you know what, this is probably because I uh, made fun of that doll to his face, so I'm going to write him a letter. That's like a nice way to apologize, I guess, you know, keep yeah. it real. No, yeah, but you'll see is in the pictures on the Instagram, the, the fucking case for this guy is just covered with letters from these people. Yeah, it's definitely it's good PR. Like, it keeps people interested. Um, I always, I, I mean, even upon doing research for this, uh, I kept coming across this story. And I honestly don't know if I can confirm if it's true or not, but it, it it's interesting. It adds a little bit of flavor. It's spooky enough to, to consider. Yeah, you know? and supposedly um, after Gene and before the museum, uh, there was somebody else that Robert was in the possession of. Um, I've never actually been able to confirm that, but I, I've heard that from a couple different sources. Well, yeah, like Gene's family moved out of the house and left uh, Robert the doll yeah. up in the attic, and somebody else bought the house, and so... It was uh, there. Right, yeah, Robert came with it, right? And, and they never really, like... It, there's not a whole lot, but I, I did... Um, a couple different sources said that the previous owner... They, the way they worded it, I don't particularly believe, because the way they worded it was like, if the the new owner would say something negative about Gene, then Robert would have a reaction. And I don't particularly buy that, because why would the previous homeowner talk shit about Gene? 
You know I don't what know. I mean? Like that's he's probably the reason that they're moving out. I have a feeling in, in the end, you know. I have a feeling that realistically, it's probably if the name was brought up, or possibly even if something was brought up about like the previous owner, you know, maybe they'll. I don't know. Maybe there was like some hole in the ceiling or something. They're like, ah, fucking the last owner was a piece of shit. Like I can't believe they would leave it like this. Then it would elicit a reaction from the doll, and yeah. it would not be a positive reaction. Yeah, yeah. The um, the uh, museum, by the way, is the East Martello or Mar- Martello, mm-hmm. double L. I don't know what uh, Martello. what origin it's from, but maybe Martello, East Martello Museum. But yeah, so there, it, it, it Robert's an interesting story because in the age that we're in now, I mean, we get you know, it's twenty twenty one. It um, is. Before the Annabelle series and all that, and before all that kind of cracked and became, you know, the new hot button thing. Yeah. Uh, we had Chucky. And then we always had, you know, uh, I, I think there was like a Twilight Zone episode about a doll that came to life and, you know, would attack people. And it's it's always sort of been around. Yeah. And the interesting thing about Robert is that it it, it kind of follows more of a curse than it does an actual haunting or like anything like that. a possessed sort of dealy. Yeah. It's just weird. It leads to a lot of negative interaction. Um, I think a common misconception with the idea of curses is that it would lead to death. Uh, it doesn't have to. It A lot of times it's just things that aren't positive. Yeah, it's just like, it's kind of like the trope. It's like, you're going to die. Yeah. You're, you're going to die. You and know what I mean? typically a lot of curses... Um, they, they might not even have truly negative effects. It might just be very slight inconveniences that continue to happen. Yeah. And I think that's why Robert is often overlooked because it doesn't have that uh, that punch in it like yeah. Annabelle does, you know? And it's kind of cool because, I mean, Robert predates all of those. Like Chucky, oh, yeah. Annabelle. Like, he apparently was given to, uh, to Gene in 1904. Yeah. So like, this, it's old as shit. This is way earlier. And it, it's just fun because it it's very unique, I guess, in its own sense. And now, with the dawn of the internet, and especially with Reddit and YouTube and things like that, um, there's plenty of other, you know, haunted dolls or cursed dolls, things like that. Yeah, we'll get to some Reddit uh, doll type things in a little bit. Oh yeah, but but Robert is um, he's one of the more contemporary. He started the contemporary movement of cursed dolls. Um, obviously, yeah, if you get into things like voodoo, uh, stuff like that, that predates way more, but th- that's in a whole different category than this. Yeah. That's like very mystical and faith driven. And this is, it's just random. It's just nothing. You don't have to believe in anything. It's just a fucking doll that just does its own thing. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, last fun fact about Robert the doll. The uh, the sailor suit that he is seen wearing is thought to have been jeans from childhood. Really? So he's wearing jeans clothes. Yeah. Okay. A little sailor suit. He's holding like a little little sheep, maybe? Yeah. I'll, it's You'll okay. see. You'll see. So. Well, yeah, let's move on to. What, what do you got? What do you got? I'm going to move into one. It, it, it's it's way different. It's a lot more common. You're probably going to be aware of this. But I do think it's fun. We'll pepper it in here. Um, we're going to talk about the curse of the billy goat, right? The billy goat? Just any billy goat or a specific goat? No, the Chicago Cubs. You know, the oh, curse shit. of the billy goat. Oh, my God. All right, yeah. No. I, so, yeah. this is, uh, for those of you unaware, it's it's very simple. But it, it actually has a couple of different layers on it. Um. For those of you that are interested in sports, you know, there's plenty of sports curses out there. Uh, the big one, probably most known, would be like the curse of the Bambino. After he left the Red Sox, they hadn't won a World Series in forever. Curse of the Bambino. We got the curse of, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, the Madden cover? Yeah, the Madden yeah. cover curse, uh, which as of right now, knock on wood, appears to have been broken last year. There's no wood in here to knock on. It's all just drywall. And, um, yeah, I mean, as of right now, that one's fine. So I think the Madden curse is just a lot of coincidence, you know? Maybe. Maybe bad things just happen. 
Yeah, that is true. You know, it, it just and happens. Actually, before I get into the billy goat, that is, I'm glad you brought that up. Because this is something I've been stewing on for a minute. That bad things just happen? For those of you unaware of what the Madden curse is, the video game series Madden NFL, uh, it's the football game that comes out every year. And since about actually when it started, and it, it really kind of kicked off in the late 90s, um, the people that would grace the cover of that game would typically have an extreme, extremely bad situation occur. Um, well, That's a good way to put it, like situation. Because they wouldn't always be like hurt or something. Like sometimes they'd just be like, uh, what is it? Like just eg- they would exit the game for the season. Or yeah. Something. And it's like it, it wasn't, it, I mean, it was in no way a curse. Is it, you know, like the di- the Hope Diamond that we talked about last time. Oh, yeah, that's God. crazy. That involves like wild dogs and shit. That's nuts. Uh, this one, it was really just a lot of, Every year, it was a different player that would be on the cover. And then within a year or two, something very negative would happen to that player. Uh, Usually like a season-ending injury, uh, they'd retire or they'd start to really suck, things like that. Um, Obviously, there's outliers. Like, I mean, Tom Brady was on it in, what was that, 2000 and... I don't even fucking know. It was in the 2000s, so you got 21 years to pick from. Yeah, he was on it. Um... I think twice, maybe once or twice. Uh, I think it was 18 he was on the cover of. And, I mean, nothing bad happened to him. Like, yeah, they claimed it was, you know, a, a dip in production. Um, but I think with the Madden curse, you know, people will spend hours of their time digging into it and telling you facts. Uh, but here's my simple opinion on that. The people that get on the cover of Madden are typically the best player from the previous season. And if not, they're just all around really good players. And they're probably the first targets for people to try and injure. And I know nobody wants to have that conversation. That happens in sports. If you don't think it doesn't, you're crazy. I mean, look at the Raiders just as a whole. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're killing people. It I mean, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. It literally happens all the time. And that that's kind of part of the game is that injuries play a part in what happens to your year. So, of course, they're going to fight to, you know, maybe they're not going to try to kill you, but they're going to try to, you know, tackle you really hard, knock the wind out of you, shake you up a little bit so that you're you're rattled. You're not playing yeah. the same. Yeah, maybe sever the ACL, you know. So, it's to me, the Madden curse is very childish. But this is why I prefer the Billy Goat, the curse of the Billy Goat. Billy Goat's got some charm to it, you know. So... A man who owned a tavern in the Chicago area named William Billy Goat Cianus. Cianus? Or saying it's S I A S I A N I S. Cianus? Cianus? Yeah, yeah. Cianus. Anyways, um, he was going to the game, actually. It was game four of the 1945 World Series at Wrigley Field. Um, this was their first World Series appearance since, what was it, I think 1907? Something like that. Um, and, you know, it was a big deal for Chicago because they were excited. You know, they wanted to go. And the reason he was called Billy Goat is because William actually owned a Billy Goat named Murphy. Ador- right? That's an adorable name for a Billy Goat, by he, the way. Yes, he named it Murphy. And um, fun fact. It was on a leash, and he had bought himself and Murphy a ticket to the game. And when I didn't he, know he bought a ticket for Murphy. Yes, he That's did. That's fucking awesome. And when he was at the game, um, he pretty much tried to get in with a goat. And it really wasn't the fact uh, that it was a goat. It was the fact that Murphy smelled like garbage, and the security refused to let him in. Now, they understood. They were like... I mean, I'm sure times are a little bit different. They were like, we really don't care if it's a goat. Uh, it has a ticket and all that, but it smells terrible. We just can't let this in. So like, like, you're going to have to bathe this goat. Yeah. Um, it was not allowed in. So he, William and Murphy were turned away at the gate of the 1945 World Series. And this is when William turned to them facing Wrigley Field and said, quote, You are going to lose this World Series. And you are never going to win another World Series again. Nobody thought anything of it, whatever. Um, But the Chicago Cubs ended up losing Game 4 
uh, which evened up the series at two to two. Okay, right. um, it went to seven uh, seven games, so it was a full on series, and the Cubs ended up losing. And this is when the curse of the Billy Goat was born. Yeah, people started remembering Murphy. Mm-hmm. Murphy Brown. I'm and, gonna call him Murphy Brown. And now this didn't get a lot of attention because, like I said, the curse of the Bambino was a lot more prevalent because, I mean, Babe Ruth is, you know, he's Babe fucking Ruth. Yeah, there's, he has a candy bar named after him. Um, but once the Red Sox won the World Series in 2004, it had appeared that the curse of the Bambino had been lifted once and for all, and they didn't have to really worry about it anymore. So now this is when the curse of the Billy Goat kind of, you know, stepped up. We were approaching 100 years of a World Series drought, we were going on 50, 55 plus years, almost 60 years of not being in a World Series for the Cubs. Yeah, it was quite a while. Um, oh, and I, I apologize. It was 1908, not 1907. I, had, I was one you year son old. Son of a bitch. Um, but either way, we're, on, we're in a major, major drought here for the Cubs. And so this is what happens, okay? Um. People are really just starting to kind of freak out. They love it. Um, it went on, it went on, it went on. And then eventually, in 2003, no, not 2003, sorry, 2008, the nephew of William Sinus or Sianus, or however the fuck you say that, was brought into the game. He was brought to the stadium, okay? And they brought him out and a billy goat. And a Greek Orthodox priest, I guess, what? just for, you know, the sake of brevity, I guess. <laughs> but they <laughs> brought all awesome. of them out. Uh, he threw out the first pitch. They had the goat and everything. And his nephew had officially declared that the curse of the Billy Goat was over. And now, while they didn't win the World Series that year, they did eventually win it in 2016. Thus, closing off any ideas of the curse of the Billy Goat for the Cubs. Dude, do you remember when they finally won the World Series? It was wild. Like, were you downtown when that happened? No, I was I was watching it on television, and literally, we're, what, 35 miles southeast of the city? Yeah. Or, like, I guess, like, southwest and east a little bit. Yeah. And... There was just enormous, like, fireworks and screams, like, in a neighborhood. Dude, you should have been in the fucking South Loop when that happened. I can't. I I don't want to be. That was my first year, like, no, it wasn't my first. It was my second year living down there in college, and it was fucking pandemonium on the streets. It was insane. Dude, homeless people were just like, this is amazing. Like, they didn't even care. They weren't even begging. Everyone was in the streets. There was no cars going. The ones that were were just honking and, like, waving at people. It was crazy for like three hours. That's pretty cool. And and hey, well, we lifted the curse. You know, it was gone. Curse is gone. We didn't. We never had to worry about that curse again, unless it happens. But we'll be dead. Who before knows? That, so yeah, it just matter. don't deny Billy Goats at your stadiums. Anybody? Very, very true. The but Cubs that is, are a testament to that. That is the curse of the Billy Goat. And also, for those of you that you know, probably have now put two and two together, the famous Chicago restaurant, the Billy Goat Tavern is named for that very instance. Yeah, there you go. And, you know, that, that that's just a little factoid that uh, if you didn't piece that one together, now you know. Now you friggin' know, yeah. So that wasn't really an object, I guess. It was more of just a... You're objectifying goats, Grant. You can't do that. Yeah, it was just like a curse of a of an organization, I guess. That's, that's very unique yeah. well, in that sense. Yeah, interesting. Well, you want to get to a, a real cursed item. This isn't a goat. It's not a goat at all, actually. It's a fucking chair. You're familiar with chairs, are you not? Oh, I am. I'm very familiar very with Very familiar the idea with of a chairs, chair. Grant is. Well, there is a chair that was owned by a man named Thomas Busby. Navi, I know you don't like chairs. He doesn't. Okay. Well, Thomas Busby. Uh, he owned this chair. He didn't really own it. It was just his favorite chair in his uh, his local pub. Okay, it's it's not even his chair. It's, it's just, not even his chair. He I was just it. a lush who was very very attached to his favorite chair. I love this chair. So he was arrested and tried and condemned to death after he murdered his father in law, Daniel Audi. All right? I like that name, Daniel. Yeah. And this Audie. is way back in 1702. But apparently, Daniel Audi had used. Uh, Thomas's favorite chair 
Ooh. Yeah, right? Ooh. And uh, when Thomas like confronted him, uh, his father-in-law was like, you know what? I'm I'm going to take my daughter and leave this place forever if you don't shut the fuck up. But to be honest, that it sounds crazy. A but bit of an overreaction, I'd say. I, see, I would almost disagree. Because if I was a father and my daughter was, you know, planning on marrying this man, and this guy went so apeshit because somebody sat in a chair that he liked to sit in at a bar, it's not like he paid for this chair, okay? It's not like it's in his house and he came in and was sitting in his chair like bare-ass naked rubbing his cheeks on it. It's just a public chair. And he's that upset about it. He's like, all right, here's the deal. You probably shouldn't marry my daughter because you're fucking nuts. I feel like that's an acceptable response. No, you know what? You're right. But, again, but you, you have you to know, handle it better because you know that this guy is a little unhinged. He's uh, an unstable drunk, and at that point, like, you're already comfortable with an unstable drunk marrying your daughter. Where, where does the line get drawn yeah, exactly. is what I'm saying. So he should have probably used a little bit more couth, uh, in you know, in that conversation. But, you know, I'm, I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying that uh, both parties here are fucking nuts. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, they were both criminals. They were both criminals. Apparently, Audie and Bu- uh, Busby were running a coin ma- a counterfeit manufacturing business as well as other criminal enterprises at the same time. So this argument uh, ultimately led to, uh, you know, he was just like, I'm going to take my daughter. We're going to leave you forever, Daniel, Audie said. And then Thomas uh, that night snuck into his room and killed him. Oh. So he killed him, and then he was quickly arrested and then tried and condemned to death. But before that, uh, he, uh, he, he, you know, he requested that he be able to, uh, you know, eat his favorite meal at his favorite pub in his favorite chair before he's hanged. Okay. That's they reasonable. Give him, yeah. They give him it. They, they give him all the food and right as he's done, he stands up and he declares anyone that sits in this chair will suffer and die. Oh. And then he was promptly hanged. Okay. So is it that weird? This is just, you know, it's a, it, who cares? Whatever, the chair remains in the pub after this, 1702, okay? Uh, yeah. Well, locals claim that during the Second World War, Canadian airmen from the nearby base of skipton on Swale went to the pub, and those who sat in the chair never returned from bombing missions. Okay? Ooh. Again, though, I mean, you that's, know... It's kind of like a... That's a tough one. That could yeah. just be co- coincidental that's on that one. That's a bit of a scattershot of a uh, connection there because they're soldiers. Yeah, like this is the it's cursed... Very, yeah, This very is the common. cursed revolver that we play Russian roulette with. It's like, well, somebody's going to get really unlucky. It Someone's might not be a die. curse, but, you know, it's not, not great. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently the first recorded victim, apparently... Of, uh, of this chair before, you know, World War II and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, it was an unarmed chimney sweep who had no other option but to use Busby's chair. And the first time in decades that it had been used. So perhaps no, you know, parlance uh, was, was given to the ominous warning uttered by its former owner. So, uh, several minutes after finishing his break and returning to work, the unfortunate man fell off the roof to his death. Busby's stoop had claimed the first of many victims. Ooh. And, you know, just anyone, literally anyone who went on to sit in this chair would either die pretty quickly afterward or, you know, maybe within weeks, within months. It was weird, okay? And then it was just placed in a basement at one point of, like, a business, and daredevils from miles around would come and uh, sit in it, and the same fate would befall them. Isn't that funny that... You know, when you hear the term daredevil, I think of a guy that's going to, like, you know, strap bottle rockets to his feet and try to, like, jump over a, a fucking mountain or something. A mountain, yeah. Um, But, like, this, it's like, I'm a daredevil. I'm an adrenaline junkie. I'm going to sit in this chair. I'm going to go to this bar and sit in this chair. It's like, oh, wow, well, you really are a, a badass motherfucker, right? You're going to... You're going to show us how cool you are, I guess, weirdo. All right, so so it's in this basement. All these people are fucking dying. The last straw, apparently, was a uh, cleaning woman who stumbled onto the chair and later suffered an aneurysm. Oh, what a poor woman. Yeah, and the delivery driver who crashed his delivery van between deliveries within an hour of his encounter. All these things. It all just happened all at once. And so the person who owned the bar got fucking fed up. And he contacted the Thirsk 
museum and asked if they would take the chair off his hands. And the museum staff agreed and carefully, uh, you know, arranged that uh, it be transported to their tight security museum, okay? And it, it, this didn't stop people from trying to sit in it, so the museum had the chair suspended five feet in the air and hung on the wall so people couldn't sit in it. Isn't that freaky? That is quite It's strange. a very cursed chair. Everyone's dying sitting in it. I, I kind of like that, though. It's just like a weird curse that, you know... You said this chair you're gonna die. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, and I do like the uh, the tag like, like the end of this this article here. It's are you still sitting comfortably? Are you? Isn't that just cute? Yeah. Well, uh, Busby's chair don't sit in that shit. You're gonna die. I kind of like that. That's a it's a very unique story. Um, you typically hear you know I mean with a lot of these cursed items, there's a lot of lore in it, like oh it's haunted or it's possessed or in the case of Robert, no one really knows, but it's, you know, it, it's some type of... He looks creepy enough and entity. bad stuff's happening, yeah. Uh, but this chair, it's really just pure unluckiness. It's very similar to the Hope Diamond, but it has no, uh, I guess, I mean, you, you hate to say it like this, but it doesn't have like monetary value. It's just a chair. It's a wooden chair that was in a pub. It serves no major purpose other than just being a chair it was like a hopeless fucking criminal drunk's favorite chair and now it's killing people but that's i think that's what makes it a very entertaining story it's kind of charming uh the, it is kind of charming it's just so simple it's just oh furniture it's like oh my couch gives you sores it's like oh it why never do you fails use to I give you sores like something I like that i can't afford a new one i just i don't know what to do well, i don't know what to do I um, I do find it. I I'm a little upset about the cleaning lady because she didn't stand a chance. She just stumbled in. I think she was just trying to reach something on a high shelf, maybe dust or something. Then she was like, "Whoa!" And then she fell into it and died of an aneurysm. Yeah, she stood not ab- very cool. Absolutely zero chance of anything. Um, because even if she didn't stumble upon it, I assume that she would have to move it, you know, in order to do her job correctly. Yeah. And that would ultimately lead to her gruesome demise. I mean, an aneurysm is not fun. Um, I've never had one. Don't wanna. You no, know, most don't people that, do that. Most people that do don't. Uh, you know, they don't last very long. I. It's usually just right then and there. I do have to say, um, there's something about. I think it's just human nature, and I. I would really love to explore where that started, where that kind of came from. Um, but the idea that people, you know, with their dying breath can cast these spells that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Like, they're, they're not magic. You yeah, know? This, this wasn't like some sort of, like, yogi or, like, a mage or some shit. It was just, like, a drunk criminal. Yeah, he was just a guy, a regular old guy that Killed his party. father-in-law. It's super just domestic crimes. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah, and I, with his dying breath, he was like... I anyone that sits in this chair will be you know just killed. They'll be dead. There's no no chance. I mean, it does follow. It makes sense that he would say that because I mean, the reason he killed his father in law was for fucking just using it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just don't sit in the chair. Don't sit in there. It's a great segue into uh, another one that I have. Okay, yeah, what you got over there? What you got? Um, this one is called the Bassano vase or the Bassano vase. Oh, um, it is interesting, and it actually—I actually wasn't going to talk about it because I, you know, it was like, oh, what's so interesting about it? But then, you know, we were watching those videos, and it was like, well, there, you know, there's a little bit. Yeah, there's more a little bit more. On it. The only thing I know about it is that it was carved from silver. Yes, so it was a vase that was cast from silver in the 15th century. Um, Really, the story, it's kind of word of mouth. There's not a lot of specific data because it's not like this super elegant item. It's just a, a silver vase. Yeah. B, it's just the B thing. sides of the cursed. Yeah. You know? And um, it, the original intent was that it was given to an Italian bride uh, who lived near Napoli, and it was her wedding present. Okay. And it was presented to her, and on that night of her wedding, she was found dying on the floor, clutching the Bazano vase. The fuck happened? 
Um, nobody knows. And th- this is interesting. Uh, we'll, you know, once I finish this little paragraph here, we'll, I'll explain. Dying on the wedding night. Um, so she's dying. She's got her hands wrapped around it. And again, just like, you know, the chair, um, with her dying breath, the bride vowed that she would have her revenge and passed away. I guess not peacefully, but you know, she just died right then and there. On Jesus the floor. Christ. Yeah, I never like picture like people vowing revenge and then dying like surrounded by loved ones or something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always just like right then and there. They they have to get that out and then they're like ah yep. and then it's just over, you know. And this is inter- this is what I find interesting about the story, probably more so than anything, is the fact that nobody truly knows if I mean, here's the question. Was the vase cursed before she got it? Or was it just, you know, a circumstance that led to her death with her having this item and then her vowing her revenge? Was that what brought the curse on? Well, let me tell you, it didn't do her any favors. Right. All right. So, yeah, maybe it, maybe it was a thief trying to steal it, but she said no, and he said, eh, and that was him stabbing her with a knife or something. Uh, oh. You know, I don't know. But she she still had it. And well, now it's fucked. As time passed, uh, it was passed around from family member to family member. Um, and each person that had it, uh, with varying timelines, anywhere between one week to eight months, each person that would have it in their possession would end up dying. And this continued on for nine people in the family. Right. What time was this? Like, what year... Uh, this was in the 1600s. Damn. All right. Um, so that had continued to occur. Uh, people were dying in and out, you know, just fucking one to the next, in and one out, to in the and next. Out, yeah. Um, but then eventually it was decided, and this is where it's not totally known if this was decided by the family or uh, if somebody else had gotten possession of it at this point. But it was decided that it would be hidden away and not to be messed with again. Um, they wouldn't try selling it or giving it away because it was like, well, it's just, I'm not going to be responsible for that. Yeah. So no, yeah. they got rid of it. Um, they buried it underground. Uh, some people say that they put it in concrete. Um, all that we need to know is that it was gone and it was found underground in the year 1988. That's a long ass fucking time. How about time. that? Jesus Christ. 1988. Um, like making like a Sears or something, doing some renovate, like excavating rather. Um, I, they they don't specifically say, but they do say it was unearthed. Um, and people, you know, have clearly thought that this was an antique of extreme proportions. Yeah. No, yeah, I I just feel like Sears was the the cause. Um, but interestingly enough, and this has led to a lot of kind of mysterious thoughts in and of itself. Inside the vase was a paper that read, Beware, this vase brings death. And what's interesting about that is the Warning fact... Warning sign number one. Well, it's, yeah, it's weird, first off. Second off, paper, um, it would not last that long. So if we're led to believe, even if it were sometime in the 1700s that this would, was buried, um, to bury a piece of paper in a vase... It would more than likely be illegible or just completely it probably dust. Yeah, at that it would just point. be completely yeah. disintegrated. Um, but it was found inside. It was a small scroll. Well, isn't that interesting? Because like, it could be theorized that maybe the curse kept the integrity of the paper so as to warn people. But then, I don't know. That that would also assume that curses are are ultimately good and that they don't want to affect people i think that is what are what would be the intentions of a curse it's like i feel like a curse would be a predatory sort of idea no see, you know what i mean this is this is something that I'm, i want to talk about after uh, right. we're done with our little curses little curses um but this paper did nothing to you know freak out the owner because in the same year of 1988 it was sold for four million lira uh, i'm not sure what currency that is is it lira or lira lira l-i-r-a lira lira yeah um some, some money but anyway, it was back in circulation uh, within that one year of them finding it. Um, so the first buyer, and now again, keep in mind, this is all uh, just information. It, nothing is actually corroborated or connected. It's just weird happenstances that occurred with people around this vase. All right. Um, 
So the first buyer, who was a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before dying under mysterious circumstances. A pharmacist in Sears. Yes. Um, then, immediately after that, a 37-year-old surgeon who died two months after purchasing the vase. After this, the vase was sold one final time. And this time it went to an archaeologist. And this the archaeologist was obsessed with the vase, documented it, took pictures of it, this is why we actually have real footage of it. Um, and uh, after three months with the vase, at the age of 45, the archaeologist was found dead of a heart attack. All these people just keep dropping like fucking flies. Shit. Um, so pretty much what happened here, um, the family that was left with the vase could not resell it. Um and they de- the reason they couldn't sell it is because the story had kind of broke. And then on top of that, they were asking for the same price that he had purchased it for, which was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half million lira. Fucking sh- I, Oh, yeah. I don't know the, and, the exchange rate to U.S. dollars, but that's a lot of whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough... Um, they decided to take their losses and they sold it for far cheaper than the archaeologist had bought it for. And they got rid of it, right? Um, the next owner died under very strange circumstances again. Um, with this, uh, the family of the people that had just died took the vase and they decided that they were done with it. And they chucked it out of a window. And what do you think happened? It it killed a homeless man under a bridge. Close. It hit a police officer in the head. Oh, all right. All it right. did not kill him, though. Oh, it did okay. not kill the police officer. Um, so the police officer, he took the vase, and they, 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 I mean, he talked to the people. He was like, you know, what the fuck's going on? What, you're what's littering, happening you're going to get a ticket no matter what, but what are you doing? And they didn't really go into a lot of details about, you know, why they did it. They were just like, we don't want it anymore. We're sorry that this happened. So he took it. He was like, all right, fuck it. And he tried to give it to a museum. Um, And after lots and lots of trying, uh, he eventually was able to donate it to the museum. Um, But before this, it actually remained in police custody, which I found quite interesting. Interesting? Like in the evidence room or like just in the office, like keeping donuts? Yeah, so it it was in a police custody. Well, they were actually, I mean, not for any specific reason, but they were in talks with, uh, you know, the museum taking it. Okay. And the museum agreed to take it, but then, funnily, funnily, that's not a word, but I say it a lot. I think it is, but it just sounds weird. Funny enough, the vase never made it to the museum. The museum had backed out at the final hour and said that there was no room. There was, you know, they weren't interested in it, but they do appreciate it. No room. Okay. And once again, in the 1990s, the vase was buried deep under the Italian ground, never to be seen again. Oh, it was in Italy? Oh, it, it was probably used at the fucking police station for lady fingers. It could have been. There you go. It could have been. But the vase since then has not been seen or reported. Um, and hopefully, probably not for a while. The one thing that I find uh, interesting about the vase, um, again, and curses are difficult because, you know, you really have to want to believe in a curse. But the truth of this is, um, if you believe in curses and you are to follow, you know, regular old standard cursing behavior, silver is actually something that would go against the curse. It would help you, you know, stop the curse. Uh, That's so. In this, well, I mean. Just, I always thought that was just for like vampires and werewolves with bullets and stakes. And yeah, things. but those are curses. You know, the curse are of they the curses? werewolf. You know, it's like those are things that typically have negative connotations. It's like they're cursed. You know? uh, yeah, I guess it is considered. I just never really consider that a curse. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just how it is. Yeah, it, it just you know? is. It's just like get, having but a guess, fucking hangnail. It just yeah, is. A hangnail. I guess that's kind of how you got to look at it, though. But, but yeah, yeah so it's a curse. It's funny to me because silver typically is more of a lighter material and i don't mean you know in like the sense of weight i mean in the sense of anything that's you know negative silver is usually used in a more positive way 
yeah. uh, when it comes to that. You know, vampires, werewolves, uh, religious things like that. A lot of silver is very reflective of positivity. Isn't that fun? It's just one step down from gold, but gold is such, seen as such like a, 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 a symbol of wealth and just corruption. Yeah. You see? know what I mean? But that is the curse of the vase, the Mazzaro vase. Wow, it's gone. Who knows where it is? Yeah, so I uh, I had those two uh, interesting stories. I had one like kind of fun one, one more. Uh, it, it, this one's a real wild ride, and there's also not a lot of you know specific Stuff. data on it. So it's. Like, I also have a really quick one. It's not really you know. necessarily true. This vase story, I don't know, but it's fun. That's why I said it. Yeah. So no, let's yeah. hear. Let's hear yours. Let's hear All what right. you got to say. So I, here. I theoretically have two. We oh, may. We may lay as well. Into it. Lay into two. It. All right. Well, first, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this one. This was sent to me by my boss, Kate. So thank you for that. Uh, they actually gave me the idea to do another curse episode. Thank you, Kate. So uh, this item is called SCP-1074. You want to guess maybe what it is? What the? F- is it like a microchip? <laughs> it might be. It might have a microchip. All right. Well, the description of this thing. Uh, SCP-1074 is a portrait-sized oil painting on canvas produced by an unidentified artist. Okay. So, when uh, photographed or videotaped, the entirety of SCP-1074 appears to be painted a uniform shade of gray with distinctively visible brush strokes. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Well, let me tell you some things about this fucking thing. What happens... Here are some special containment procedures surrounding this painting, okay? It's it's contained and has very specific things you can and can't do with it. So it is to be kept in a frame with an opaque cover in a locked archive room on Site 342. I don't know where that is. Just we Site 342. Know. We're not allowed to know. There you go. So no personnel are to view. I'm, just, I'm not going to keep reading the numbers and letters. They're not, uh, uh, you know, permitted to view it under any circumstances, with the exception of D-class personnel undergoing testing. Any photography or video recording of it are to be conducted by remote-controlled drone. Ooh. Okay, you're not even supposed to look at this, not even supposed to be in the same room with it. Okay? Here why is do we why. have it? Why is it, why is it a thing? Okay, it's, it's fucking crazy. And again, we don't know who painted this. So in the event of accidental viewing of this thing... In, uh, it's like a fucking Disney ride. In the, if you're like on an airplane, in it's the like, event, In the event of a horrible crash... You'll notice seats, the exits on either side. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Okay, all right, I guess. All right, so in the event of accidental viewing of this thing, uh, subject is to be dosed immediately with Class A amnestetics. A- amnestics. Amnestics. Anesthetics. No, it's A M N E S T I C S. I yeah, I'm not something. Sure. See, it's it involves things we don't even know what they are. Yeah, I'm not a medical guy. So they're supposed know. to be dosed with this class A thing that starts with A, and uh, removed from the area where it is, uh, you know, and they are to be uh, tested. Okay, so the person uh, shall report for psychiatric analysis every two days and see and receive additional that stuff that starts with A. Uh, as necessary for as long as the onset of exposure symptoms can be prevented. Oh, okay, okay. Let's get into what these symptoms are, okay? Uh, When it is viewed by a human being, the SCP-1074, when it's viewed by a human being, the observer immediately begins to exhibit psychological symptoms similar to onset of uh, Stendhal Syndrome. Okay. Ooh. Stendhal syndrome, including increased heart rate, sweating, and vertigo. Uh, the uh, the individual viewing this thing will attempt to vividly describe the image they are seeing to anyone present, frequently describing it as the greatest and most moving work of art that they've ever seen. Uh, statements from pe- from persons so affected describe it to uh, is not a blank gray canvas but as a highly detailed painting of uh, inconsistent nature. No two individuals describe it as the same thing. Reoccurring themes are like, uh, they describe imagery suggesting human mortality, individual insignificance, uh, legal or moral you know, judgment, uh, religious 
stuff. And and then it's in a, a little bracket. It says redacted. So it's some you sort of know. thing. Yeah, I guess we can't know. But people just like freak the fuck out when they see this and start describing it. And that's all they can talk about. They're like, they're dizzy. They're like spinning around. That's it. It's pretty crazy though. It's like a painting directly from the creators of the universe. It's just anxiety in a painting. What the fuck? That's anxiety weird. inducing painting. And I guess crazy? my question is, I mean, I I see why we would keep it. You know, you gotta we gotta try to get to the bottom of this. But I don't I don't even have a thought. Me either, dude. They took it like uh, you know with one of the little drone things because no one's supposed to touch it or look at it. With one of the drones, they took like a sample of what it was, you like what was used to paint it. Uh, it's just regular ass fucking paint from like Blick. It's wow. just regular paint anyone could find. The whoever whoever painted that is like the best painter. I ever. guess, dude. I saw a picture of it. It just looks like something I would do, but think it's not done yet. Yeah, like, yeah. There's not, there's really nothing to this right now. They're like it's the greatest thing humanity has ever witnessed. It's insane. I'm, I'm in. I'm interested. I'm in too, man. But yeah, my uh, my boss sent me that, and I was like, "What? That, that's it's very crazy." Yeah, it's funny because it's like, is it? I wonder, is it cursed? I mean, in a sense, it is because whoever looks at it is fucked. It's like a psychological weapon. Yeah, it is. It's like, what if we just like projected that at our enemies, and it's like, and they're all insane. We win. Well, that's another thing. I saw a picture of it. Yeah, but and you it did saw nothing. you know so, like, a what, reflection of a reflection of a picture. Maybe, maybe it's it's it gets like the half life of whatever the craziness. If you lay your eyes upon you. it, it will make you sleepy. I guess I don't know. Maybe, but your heart will go crazy out of your chest. I don't know. I'm interested. That's fun. But I thought that was cool. All right, so the last thing. Uh, you want me to? Ju- I'm, I just have to read a really long Reddit post. Hey, you know what? I say go for it. I do what there's something about Reddit when you find good posts, it's they're better than fucking books sometimes. No, it's crazy. They are good, so I'm in. I'm yep. strapped in for it. So there's this thing. Okay, it's called a crone. Like a cronut. I it I like I wish it donut? was that delicious. I really do, but it's the crone of the cat skills. Ooh, okay. Right? Apparently, that's like a wooded area in New York or something. Like that. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's like a cursed carving, and apparently, it was found by two people that were just you know like uh, they were, they were fucking around in the woods. They went into a cave. They found this thing. Okay, it's it's insane looking. I'll post pictures of it. It's like a little idol made of wood with nails in its eyes and a noose around its fucking neck. It is creepy as shit. Ooh. So okay. it surfaced about six years ago on Reddit through this story, the article of which I have. All right. All right. Let's 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 fucking do this. Me and a friend... This is the title of it. Me and a friend found this creepy statue while hiking and now strange things are going on. Anyone know what this is? All right. So let's get into it. Last weekend, my friend and I went hiking in the Catskills near Sundown Forest FWIW and found this really creepy statue while fucking around in some caves. It has nails in its eyes and a noose around its neck. It looks like it might be old. I don't think it's been there very long, but it's weird because this cave was off the trail, very off the trail. Uh, someone had a fire going there not too long ago. Then he posted some pictures of it. He's like, here's pics. There's a link. The statue really wigged me out, but my buddy's my buddy decided to take it home, even though I told him not to. Everyone says that there's devil worshippers that come out here to sacrifice animals and do their spells and shit, so I didn't want anything to do with this thing. He's a smart guy. Smart. Smart, smart move. Smart man. A couple of days later, my friend calls me and tells me that he thinks the statue is haunted because it keeps moving from its spot and he keeps smelling weird stuff. Okay, says he can't sleep at night because banging, uh, banging keeps waking him up now. Uh, now, last night someone knocked on his door, but there was no one there when he opened the door. All right, so uh, and he's super weirded out. He thinks that there is a ghost cause of the statue. It's very, very, uh, very shorthand way of writing. Cause of the statue. Mm-hmm. It might just be coincidence. But I think he's actually scared. Before we set this thing on fire, I want to see if anyone knows what this thing is. 
Anyone uh, ever seen anything like this or heard of a statue causing ghosts? Throw away because I didn't want to use my main account for spoopy stuff. Okay? And so okay. then there's an edit. All right? An expansion of the story. Edit. My friend shows up here at like 11.30. He's out of his mind scared. Never seen him like this before. I'm going to do my best to remember everything he told me because it's a lot. But long story short, he's sleeping over because something is in his house. Isn't that creepy? He found the statue on Sunday. Or we found the statue on Sunday. And like I said, I told him not to take it because it gave me bad vibes. Uh, but he took it anyway. He's been an atheist for a long time. and I, if, or As long as I've known him. And uh, when he told that... Wait. So when he told that something was going on, I thought he was just fucking with me because he knows I like to watch paranormal shows. And he always made fun of me for it. Which, that guy's a dick. Yeah, a little bit. Paranormal shows are the best. It started uh, out just as knocks and banging, but it, uh, it said he said that by Wednesday, he started waking up in the middle of the night feeling like someone was watching him. Uh, this kept happening through the week, and every time he'd wake up, he'd smell a very strong scent of pond water. Ooh, that's Ooh, unique, actually. That's very creepy, right? Uh, he dec- he doesn't believe any of this stuff, so he just ignored it for until you know a few days ago, when the statue moved from his desk into his living room. Spooky. He says that every night since Thursday, it's moved to a different room than where he left it. He thought, again, he thought it was uh, his dog moving it around because it you know it smelled funny, but his dog wouldn't go anywhere near it. He actually says that she peed in the house three nights in a row, which she's never done. So I think this is freaking out the dog. So yeah, something's fucking with the dog, too. Yeah, there you go. So last night, someone knocked at his door at three in the morning. But when he went to open it, there was no one there. His motion lights weren't on and there wasn't anyone in his driveway. Uh, he said that he opened the door to look outside and that's when he knew he made a big mistake. Like he just felt like he shouldn't have opened the door. That's why I made this post in the first place. At this point, I didn't have any reason not to I didn't have any reason not to believe him because it had gone uh, way beyond a joke and he actually sounded really really fucking scared on the phone. He kept telling me that he was going to burn the statue because he knows that something followed him home. Anyway, he stayed uh, he stayed up all night and then decided to go to the movies to take his mind off of it. When he got home, he said it felt like everything was fine and he decided to finally go to bed. This was where it gets super fucked up. He says that when he woke up, which wasn't until like 10, it was because his dog was barking like crazy. He said that the pond water smell was stronger than ever and when he went out into his hallway, he saw all of these muddy footprints everywhere. Ooh. Not like shoe prints, but barefoot. Mm-hmm. All his doors and windows were locked after someone knocks at his door, freaking him out. He's making sure to lock up. So there's no fucking way that anyone could have gotten inside. Sitting in his living room was a fucking statue. The fucking statue was just sitting in his living room, uh, which had moved again. And he says that when he started to go near it, he heard someone breathing. And in quotations, he said, like his grandpa with a tracheotomy. Damn. So that is terrifying. He pieced the fuck out. And now he and his dog are sleeping in my guest room tonight. I've never seen him this scared and he even started crying. I have no fucking idea what to do. I believe him because he has no reason to... This is weird. To lie, I guess. Uh, No reason to lie about this because it's way far... It's way too far to be a joke now. I know that everyone says not to burn it or whatever, so what the fuck do we do? He wants me to go to his house and, and uh, get the statue tomorrow, but I'm too fucking freaked out to take it back uh, to where we found it because I don't want to see whoever put it there. Sorry for all the typos, you should be. I just wanted to write this out quick so uh, I know that I got it all. Edit 2. This is a very short one. Sorry I haven't posted. Things got way worse yesterday night. Uh, we sent the statue to a guy in the comments today. So far, so good. 
Thanks to everyone who actually tried to help and didn't just call us a couple of fucking idiots. I'm... Are you on the Reddit post right now? Yeah. I, can you, like, go down? Like, let's read some of the comments. I want to see what people... A lot of what people... What react, that reaction to this was. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are like, you haven't posted anything. Uh... Yeah, he's like, you, sir, have a bound demon. Go fucking put it back in the cave. Like, that kind of stuff. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, go back. But then I also get his thing, too. It's like, uh, if people, if there are people that, like, go there to see that thing and it's gone, they're probably pissed. And I don't want to see that. Yeah, pretty you know? much. There's another guy who says, LOL, this is like some Indiana Jones movie. I've never seen anything in Indiana Jones remotely oh, like yeah, that's, this. That's Reddit for you. Uh, I can't believe someone would actually touch that thing, much less bring it home. Nope. I Okay, that one I actually agree with. That's yeah. a comment I can get yeah. down on. I, I, I concur with that guy. Here, wait. I was looking through these the other day, and there is one very helpful one. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, mean, I know... I mean, for as many people out there that, you know, like to bash on shit like this on the internet, there are people that, like... They actually treat it like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think that that's, like, the right thing to do. Like, even if you don't personally believe it, you got to take the time. Like, what you have to imagine, like, what if the person writing this, is it's not a joke to them. They are reaching out, so it's like, it doesn't help to be an asshole. You might as well try to, like, assist, you know, or see what you can do. Here, wait a minute. Um, but yeah, that's a tricky one. What do you do with that? I have no idea, but this one seemed pretty cool. So he's like, I did some research because the statue reminded me of something, and this is what I came up with. Uh, oh, wait. Wait, fuck. This is not the one I was thinking of. Hang on. Hey, it's all right. Keep talking. Keep the people busy, Grant. But no, I, um, with something like this, this is, this is almost beyond a curse. This is like some real fucking, this is like a legit horror movie, you know? Um, I can honestly say, I mean, I, okay, we, I've talked about this plenty of times before. I've been in a situation, uh, maybe like one tenth of 1% as spooky as this with a Ouija board. And I know people out there probably think it's, you know, bullshit, whatever. And I know how terrifying that can be. Uh, this is some next level, like I said, times a hundred million terrifying. Um, first and foremost, we don't know what the statue is about or what it's actually for. Um, That kind of leads me to believe that the guy who brought it home, yeah, he was playing a dangerous game because that's fucked up. No, very much so. That is not good. Um, Uh, All right, so I can't can't fucking find this thing, but there was some guy who posted about, um, he he was like a part of some, like, uh, community in India. And mm-hmm. the elders of his, like, community always talked about these dolls that they would imbue it with, like, bad spirits and they would leave them in the woods. And it sounded exactly like something like that. But I can't for the life of me find that post. Interesting. So that sucks. The one thing that I but find... But it's interesting. I find probably the most intriguing about this whole story is the smell yeah, um, pond water? I've it, never heard that in, like, any other story. No, and it's very specific... And it's got to have a reason, you know, like it doesn't just happen for no valid reason. And I'm, I'm very intrigued by that. I, uh, I actually probably wouldn't mind looking over that and just seeing, re- trying to find more about that. Cause that is beyond interesting to yeah, me. Just look up the crone of cat skills. And yeah, I mean, you know, we, we've talked plenty about ghosts and stories like this where bad smells are a huge, huge symptom of what goes on. But, I mean, I'm not saying pound water smells good, but um, it's not, like, a bad smell. It's just, it's a smell, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just kind of like, I'm in a swamp now, I know, because of the smell. Yeah, it just kind of is what it is. Um, But, wow, that... That was good. I I really thoroughly enjoyed that right? one. Yeah, that's why, because I know that was a lot to read, and there was a lot of things that I stumbled over because it was typed kind of weirdly. Hey, that's fine. But it happens. I just felt like we should definitely uh, get that out there. No, that one. Get some attention on the six-year-old post. That one was actually really, really cool. I would love an update, but again. Oh, shit. I fucking found it. Okay, yeah, let's it see. It says, yeah, Busted I know this out. shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know that's this how he shit, starts. You know? 
you should consider putting it back to the same place where you took it from. Actually, if you come over here to South India, Kerala, Kerala, I think, uh, you can see various rituals uh, relating to creating small statues like this and poking them with needles and even needling them to a tree. It was it's a practice widely uh, it is practiced widely in South India to keep the paranormal activities at bay. I don't believe in this shit, but I've seen and heard about this uh, all in my childhood. Uh, what you actually have to do is take that thing and put it back there. According to what I've uh, heard from elders in my hometown, when you took it with you, you've just released whatever paranormal it contained. It's, yeah. Uh, again, this is all BS, but I have to tell you what I know since you are so much concerned. See, that, so I thought that was a cool little, you know, like connection. I appreciate that comment so much. Like that guy he doesn't even believe, but he's like, maybe it's this. Yeah, he's like, I, you know, I, I'm aware. I'm aware. I, I, I think it's bullshit, but I'm aware. I know what you're talking about. It's I know exactly fine. what the he's like. Yeah, I know this shit. I like that. that but yeah, power move. That is that's very interesting. And the one last thing I wanted to talk about um, with curses, you had mentioned it earlier. I think before. It's we, like we got into the vase. Yeah, the, the it's idea. Like, is the idea of a curse inherently bad? Does the curse want to like bring in something like its prey? Does it want to avoid things because it knows it's a curse? What is it? See, I've always felt, and this is just again, this is my humble opinion. I'm in no way a licensed uh, paranormal researcher. I'm just someone that has always been interested in it and compiled lots of data and just kind of the way I view it is that it's more of a a curse is like a defense mechanism. Um, it's not particularly negative. It's like a barrier. But it's, um, like, I think the prime example would be, like, the curse of the Pharaoh's tomb, right? It's not a curse that is out and about trying to kill you. It's a curse that... It, it, in a way, it's there to protect whatever it's there to protect. To sort of like teach a lesson of sorts, like don't come in here, don't do that. Yeah, and it's it's kind of like a fail safe. Um, it's the if if you guys have ever seen Harry Potter, the original Harry Potter, um, the scene where that you know like they go past that giant dog and they're in that room with all that stuff. Cerberus. Uh, no, his name was Fluffy. But yeah, Cerberus is you know the, isn't it? Yeah, the, the draw. That's and then what, there's there's Cerberus, Snape. So that's many Severus. Th Severus, fuck. Oh, you're good. You're good. I don't know anything. But um, they go through like if you've ever seen the movie, you might not remember. But they land in like that weird plant that's like starts eating them, and then they're in uh that room with all the flying keys and all the shit like that. And it's like to me, that's the way I view a curse is like it's not there to harm you. It's there because you're not supposed to be there, and that's the final line of defense against just saying, don't go there. Yeah, the chair is a perfect example of that, I'd say. Exactly. So it's like... Think you're not like supposed to sit here. A curse... It, I guess a great personalized comparison for humans would be your house. You might have a sign out front that says, you know, no loitering. Or no solicitors or yeah, something like that. and then you have your door locked. Or you could be like that guy, I don't think it was in Florida, who like rigged a shotgun to his front door, but then he it actually worked on him. Mm hmm Yeah. And like, so the, but yeah, we have a no solicitor sign, your front door is locked, and somebody still comes in the house, but you have a gun, so you shoot them because they entered your house unlawfully. Yeah, so a curse is like a non-physical booby trap. Yeah, the curse would be you shooting them with a gun. It's the final line of defense against... The previous warnings. So, back with the Pharaoh's tomb. You know, all the signs said, do not enter. Uh, the vase, beware. This thing brings death. The chair, he said, don't fucking sit in it, you'll die. Um, so, where does Robert fall in this? And see, well, that's where it gets see, a little he, tricky. Yeah, I feel like he may have been more of like a haunted scenario. I don't know. Yeah, but then also, who's to say... Something like the chair, right? Um, that's a word of mouth legend that, you know, they heard that somebody had said this and then X, Y, Z occurs based on what you do and what this man said before. But who's to say that Robert the doll or, you know, stories similar to that, even the Hope Diamond, things like that, 
where there's not specific instructions, who's to say that something like that didn't occur way long ago and it's just been forgotten, you know? No, you're right. It was more of a verbal warning than anything else. And, you know, it just the verbal warning never made its way to the future. Truer words have never been spoken. So I don't think that curses are negative. I think it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you get, if you cross paths with a curse, it's negative. It's not good. I feel like, yeah, it's like if you interact with it, it's negative. But like curses stand alone. If you don't interact with it, it's just like, it's a warning. Yeah, they're, they're just paranormal or supernatural barriers. But that's the thing. It's like you have to, someone has to interact with it for you to be warned about it. So in that sense, it's kind of like, you know, there's a give take to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. What we're trying, the point we're trying to make. But there's a lot of weird curses are fucked. And a lot of it is, it's a lot of guessing. Because again, I mean, there's no way of proving that curses are real. But it is hard to deny that after so many coincidences, when does it become just more than a coincidence you know yeah that it becomes um, a curse with things you know i mean we talked about it in part one we're talking about it now these things that occur how do we know that it's not always just circumstance yeah you can't possibly know that year after year murphy the goat made everyone in boys town and wrigleyville cry daddy did there's a lot of Cubs fans that cried pretty much every year of their lives. It's true. And uh, there's a lot of people that grew up, lived, and died Cubs fans and never saw them win a World Series. So what are you going to do about that? Take that, says Murphy. Yeah, what are you going to do about that? You know, I mean, that's just life. He just wanted to see a game. I think it's, it's to me, the objects are a lot creepier because they. That, that's where I get the opinion of, like, the the self-defense because it's like most of these objects are things that had value to somebody and then when somebody else tries to take them or gain value from them is when it becomes a problem you know what i'm saying no yeah it is uh i guess in a lot of cases it's a testament to physical like connection that people have and like obsession with possessions It's very strange, but curses, uh, whether you believe them or not, they have been around and they will continue to be around probably forever, the idea of the curse. Uh, And I'm sure there's plenty of other things out there that are cursed that we just have been, I guess, lucky enough to not encounter yet. There you go. But uh, hopefully you guys uh, stay uncursed and you 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 come back next week for a brand new episode. Uh, it will be October, so get ready because, you know, we do like to amp up the scariness when it comes to October. Yeah, and I know we just covered Ed Gein and then a cannibal and then a haunting, but we're going to get spooky again. Oh, yeah. In this October, is maybe up the ante a bit. Who knows what we'll do? This you is don't time. know. We this, don't know. This is what we love. But with all that being said, that is effectively our episode for the week. Yeah. We had a really good time looking up cursed objects and talking about them. And um, we hope you enjoyed listening. Yeah, we do. If you guys like episodes like these, uh, these sort of recurring ones that we do, we uh, we also do you know urban legends stuff like that. Yeah, just send us whatever uh, whatever sparks your interest. You yeah, know, we'll throw them maybe into one of these hodgepodge episodes. If it's big enough, we'll just make it an episode. Damn right. Let you us know. know. We're We've very, done it so many times. We're very receptive to fan outreach. Uh, whatever you want to hear. Uh, whatever you want to hear more of, maybe there's something you don't want to hear anymore. Let us know. We can definitely, you know, start working on that. We could, you know, tweak what we do, have some fun. We want you guys to hear what you came here to hear. It's true. Um, yeah, and uh, as a testament to how dedicated we are to fans, right after this, we're going to record our Patreon episode for the week. Yes, we and, are. Uh, we are a is, day late and yeah. a dollar short, but we are still putting it out in the same week. We're just a little bit behind. Yeah, doesn't happen very often, but when it does, we deliver. All right? Yeah, we so, do. We don't and there it. is a link to become a patron in the link below. Yes. All right? In, in the description of this episode, you can also follow us on all the shit, Instagram, Facebook, 
Twitter, and uh, we have the email, which is startacult at gmail.com. We're also on YouTube, and I just want to do a little plug. My band put out a EP today. No object. It's called Open Closure. Go check it out, please. Check it the fuck out for us. You can us. hear me and the guy who wrote our theme song sing songs together. Yes, you will, and they never disappoint, so definitely, definitely give it a listen. Such a sweet guy. We love it very much, and support... Support the people that help make this show possible, you know? Yeah, it's true. So we are starting a cult, and that's Grant and I'm Jake, and I think that's the end. Yeah, that's definitely the end. We'll see you all next week. Have a great one. And Mitch is fishing, so bananas.